Okay. Here we go. Firstly, I would like to thank everybody for coming to our very first Cobra Career Talks. Um, we're going to have several throughout the semester. Uh, so please stay tuned for the news that we have coming to you. Each talk will be recorded and shared to our websites to make the most of the discussions. Upon entering the online session, everyone will be muted. Presenters will talk about programs and opportunities CCC and TI has to offer. And then the floor will be open to students, parents, and guardians to ask their questions. Please remember that there is no such thing as a silly question and that someone else is probably thinking the same thing you are. You may also use the chat box to ask a question and we will do our best to stay on top of those. These talks are geared towards freshmen all the way up to senior year in high school. It is never too early or too late to start thinking about what you want to do when you grow up. Um, it is also never too early to start taking the necessary steps to get you to where you want to go. The purpose of these career talks are to introduce opportunities y'all have while in high school as career and college promise students, but also um, after the possibilities you have after high school graduation. CCC and TI offers viable routes towards economic mobility in Caldwell County. On top of this, employers are desperate for trained employees in specific fields in Caldwell County, but also across the states. Who knows where your credentials will take you? That's up to you to decide. As the series goes on, program directors will note the high demand and, and beginning salary for these the work in their fields and how students are able to obtain credentials that make them competitive in the workforce. Completing a credential or degree improves employment outcomes and earnings for folks while also reducing economic inequality in our community. CCC and TI has an unrealized potential in our own backyard to improve life, qual life quality for Caldwellians, not to mention the affordability of our programs. This is something else our directors are going to be talking about as the series goes on. Employers are finding it harder and harder to find qualified employees to do the high demand jobs that we need. Once you gain an understanding of the market and the need in your field, who is to say that you won't own your own business one day? Who's to say? So with all that being said, please let me introduce you to Jimmy Griffith. He is in the Workforce Development Department. Amazing person, wonderful guide to your future. He will be talking about workforce development, work opportunities, as well as apprenticeships in, at, offered at CCC and TI. So I'm going to share my screen. Thank you, Ms. Varela. Thank you. So yes, uh, I'm excited to be here today to talk to all the high schools and high schoolers and also instructors to talk a little bit about some exciting things we have at Caldwell Community College. and. Uh, it's one of those things that you can't believe that this is something that exists. So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about apprenticeships and we have a program called Apprenticeship Caldwell. So if you don't mind going to the next slide. So to explain what youth apprenticeships are, it's basically a program for you uh, to be able to work in a workplace to gain those skills, but also the training and also go to school at the same time. So you're able to graduate from high school uh, able to go to college and go to work at the same time. So the uh, employers get that sort of pipeline of skilled workers coming in and you get to test the waters and see if that's something that you want to do uh, as far as your career. So uh, let's go to the next slide. So how does a youth apprenticeship work? So students will typically start in 11th and 12th grade. They will do a, a program called a pre-apprenticeship and once they get into an apprenticeship program over multiple years, the youth apprentices uh, will basically do paid work. They're going to have uh, on-the-job training. They're going to earn transferable credits for college-level uh, coursework, and they're going to earn their high school diplomas. So you will have you you'll be successful. You will have a preparation to be success, successful in the career that you have uh, picked in a range of industries. So we have. Uh, I'm going to show some of the programs that we have, but some of the programs could include finance, professional services, healthcare, uh, information technology, advanced manufacturing, and more. All right, let's go to the next slide. So why should you do a youth apprenticeship? 
So we use the word or the expression earn while you, while you learn. So you will be earning money while you're working, but you're also going to be learning in the classroom. So you'll have an incremental pay scale, so you start at a certain level. And as you move through the program, you're going to automatically gain these, these uh, raises, I guess. Uh, it will be incremental as you go along until you earn the full amount that somebody would earn uh, at, a, at a certain job like what you're trying to, to um, study to go to school and train for. So they will have a flexible work schedule, so it allows you to go to school and work at the same time. So you don't have to worry about conflicts of having to choose one over the other. Uh, the way the program is designed is to accommodate both, so you don't have to worry about that. It's going to be hands-on, on-the-job learning, and you'll have a master level supervisor helping you along the way. So you're not just learning from uh, somebody that just got hired. They're actually going to have somebody that's been doing the job for a long time and understands it uh, in and out and will be teaching you. Uh, and of course, of course, you're going to earn an education and, uh, and an industry recognized certifications and also credentials at no cost. This is very, very important. So not only are you going to earn all these credentials and the training, the registration, tuition fee, class materials, all that stuff is fee waived. So if we were to make a calculation of how much would that be to go to college with tuition, registration, books, and all the other fees involved, that would be an investment of ten to fourteen thousand dollars, okay, for your degree. So ten to fourteen thousand dollars. Well, if you do the pre-apprenticeship and come into our apprenticeship programs, you actually will have uh, that fee waived. You'll come at no cost, okay. So that's very important for people to know. A lot of us has a hard time really telling how much things cost, especially when you don't see a price tag when you're taking a class. So that gives you a little bit of a perspective of how much you uh, gain in cost savings. And of course you get to network with professionals in industries in your field of interest. So you get to meet those folks so uh, you're able to know what the, the industry is like. Uh, if you ever are going to uh, apply, let's say that you have graduated, you work for a company for a certain amount of time, uh, it helps you to know what the field is like and also what other opportunities are there. And of course, it increases your chance greatly of obtaining a great job at the completion of the program. So you have to keep all these things in mind. So it's, it's very much worth it. Go ahead to the next slide. So our current programs that have an apprenticeship uh, that are part of our apprenticeship Caldwell are the following. We've got construction trades, we've got electrical line worker, industrial maintenance, and we also have coming up very soon the bio, uh, biopharmaceutical manufacturing and automotive systems. So these are the programs that when you do your pre-apprenticeship, you go into an apprenticeship and you're going to be working with a company within one of those uh, programs. And you, of course, you're going to continue your studies within one of those programs. Go ahead, next. So what is the pathway? So like I mentioned before, you start with your pre-apprenticeship, so you have to register ahead of time. This is a summer, short-term, hands-on training with a professional in the area. So you'll have your classroom work, and then you're going to have your on-site work. So you get a little taste of what the work is, but also you're going to get trained. So you're not going to come in with no knowledge. You will come with some knowledge, and you will be able to apply that immediately uh, on-site after a short period of time of training, and then you go to work. And of course, you're going to earn a certificate for the experience, and of course, you're going to gain the experience itself. So it's uh, something that um, you'll have something to show for, not only in skills, but also something to hang on your wall and put in your resume and, uh, you know, introduce uh, that um, certificate to other employers in the future. So once you have finished the pre-apprenticeship, you'll be eligible for what we call youth apprenticeship program. So uh, you have to enter within 120 days of your high school graduation. So once you graduate, you have to already start looking, actually hopefully before you graduate, but within 120 days, uh, if you are uh, in our apprenticeship program, you applied and got in and all that stuff, you actually can get that uh, fee waiver that we talked about. So you want to make sure to take advantage of that. And, of course, uh, you're going to earn that associate degree at no cost. Go ahead for the next slide. So what are the minimal qualifications for the pre-apprenticeship? So you have to be a high school junior or senior, and you have to be at least 16 years old, old of age, or 16 years of age. 
You also have to be in a good academic standing. Your GPA has to be about 2.0 or better. You have to be willing to make a firm commitment to the apprenticeship program. So what does that mean? Well, you're asked to show up a certain time at the training. You're asked to show up and do your work when you go to the on-site uh, type of uh, the on-site part of the apprenticeship. So you want to make sure that you are committed to that, to get to and from, to work hard, you know, to basically follow everything that needs to be done for the apprenticeship. And also we recommend that you have a recommendation by two teachers uh, or advisor and have good attendance record at school and be able to provide your own transportation to and from uh, the place of employment. That doesn't mean that you have to necessarily have your own car, but you need to go ahead and set up uh, if somebody's driving you to and from the training, make sure to work all those things out beforehand. Okay, go ahead, next slide. So we have also another way to get in. Uh, this is uh, Industrial Manufacturing Pre-Apprenticeship Customized Training Institute, also known as IMPACT. So if you have graduated and you did not do the pre-apprenticeship, like uh, we said, when you're in 11th, 12th grade, you can do the pre-apprenticeship. Let's say that you kind of missed that boat. Uh, you weren't sure what you wanted to do, but you still want to take advantage of our apprenticeship program. So you can do the Impact Institute. And again, this is after you graduated. It's an intensive short-term training designed to prepare you for the workplace. And of course, you're going to earn industry-recognized training certifications, uh, training and certifications. And that one will you can earn up to one year of fee waives. So the pre-apprenticeship, you can earn up to two years of fee waive. This one is one year, so it's a little bit different, but still uh, great savings and a great opportunity. And um, our next, our next uh, impact class will be this summer, which will be June 7th through July 1st. And it's a Monday through Thursday class from 9 to 4 p.m. So if you're interested, you can, I'll share my email with you and I can send more instructions, but just know that if you come to Cobble Community College, to the H building, to the uh, Workforce Development Continuing Education Department, you can actually sign up for those. And there is, um, if you're eligible, there is free tuition for that class. So it's paid for. So just come and register and tell them you're, you know, where you're at with your, your schooling, and uh, we'll see what we can do for you. All right, go ahead, next slide. So if you're confused because there's a lot of information, here's a very simple pathway map that I, I made for you. So if you are currently 11th or 12th grader, first thing you need to do is apply for pre-apprenticeship, which again, we will actually release uh, very, very soon our website with this information. And then once you get approved, once you did a, the application got approved, you do your training and work for pre-apprenticeship. And then once you're done with that, then you are going to come to college full-time because you have graduated within 120 days, as we said, and start your actual youth apprenticeship. And that's where you're going to spend the next two years doing your training and work with incremental pay and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so you have to apply for that and then do the youth apprenticeship. The next one is for high school graduates. So again, instead of doing the pre-apprenticeship, you're going to do the impact class, and that will make you eligible for one year of college we uh, college way costs. And so you apply, you do the impact institute, you apply for the apprenticeship, and then you actually get to do the apprenticeship itself. So that is, in a nutshell, a very overview of, of the apprenticeship program. So here's my contact info if you want to ask me any questions and uh, I have uh, uh, my supervisor Rick Shu. Uh, he's actually uh, been working with apprenticeships a lot longer than I have so both of us will be willing to answer any questions and guide you through the process if you have any questions. All right anything else? Questions? Hello. If we may hold off on our questions till the end of the discussion that would be okay. amazing okay thank you good. so much Jimmy. we appreciate that all right do you want me to call sarah to present next please we all are right. ready for sarah all right i'm going to mute just for nice
Hey guys, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so um, I'm Sarah Green and I work with um, Continuing Education um, and in the Career Connection Center. So if you are you gonna you're gonna share the slides and everything? If you want to go ahead and pull those up. All right, so what they've asked me to talk about today is Career Coach. Um, so Career Coach is actually an application. It's a, an assessment that we can help you with in, in Career Connections to help you figure out what you would like to do um, with your career, to help you figure out what you might even like to come to school for. So Josie, if you want to hit the next screen. Um, I've taken screenshots so you can figure out where to go to our website to um, see this. So if you go to our website, www.cccti.edu, and you're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page, and under Community Links, you're going to see where it says Career Coach. And I've highlighted it here on the screen just so you can see um, what link you're looking for. So Josie, if you'll hit Next. So this is what the screen will look like once you get into the Career Coach application. What you want to do is click on where it says Take Career Assessment. Um, so go ahead to the next screen. And you want to make sure that you do the 60 question assessment. Um, the sixth question will work, but the 60 question is more in depth, more detail. So it'll, it'll give you a better indication of what you would be interested in going to school for, or a better indication of what career you would be interested in. If you'll click the next button. All right. So I did the assessment just so you could see what it's going to look like at the end. So these are actually my top three traits. It's going to actually give you traits. It'll tell you, okay, these are things that you're really good at. Um, or things that, you know, this assessment is saying that, or is picking up, saying that these are things that you're good at doing. So social, conventional, and enterprising, those are my top three. This uses um, a system called the Holland Code, and we're actually going to get into, I'll tell you a little bit about those if you'll hit the next button, Josie. The Holland Code is actually based off of six areas of interest. So basically it's saying that most people are um, at least one of these types of, of uh, in interest. So you have realistic, investigative, artistic, social, enterprising, and then conventional. So you can see right next to it. Uh, yeah, you're good, Josie. Go ahead. Um, like realistic, these people, um, they're interested in things that include practical, hands-on uh, problems and answers. They, these type of people, um, in, their interests do not like careers that involve paperwork or working closely with people. So these type of people who have a realistic in their top three, they might be interested more in like being an electrician or a carpenter or something like that, more hands-on work. Uh, people who are investigative, um, these people have interests that are mostly interested in jobs of theory or research or scientific inquiry. So maybe somebody in like a biologist or, or a chemistry or a scientific field. So if you'll hit next. So artistic, these people like to express themselves through uh, cre creatively through art. So these people uh, have good ability. They can see themselves as expressive, independent, and original. Somebody who might be artistic, they might be interested in jobs such, such as um, a graphic designer or clothing designer. Social, uh, these people like to help people. So these people might be good at teaching or counseling or being in a medical field. So maybe a job that they might be interested in might be a counselor or a registered nurse. If you want to hit the next one. Uh, enterprising, these people have leadership skills. So they enjoy uh, persuading people leading people, um, they value success in politics and leaderships. So somebody who might have this as one of their top three skills might be uh, looking for a job for like an office manager or a city manager. And then you have conventional. So these people like to work with numbers or records. Um, they like to be organized. So maybe somebody in, that has this might be interested as an administrative assistant or accountant or something like that. If you'll hit your next button. 
So you can see these are my top um, three. Now that is going to give you a list when you look when you actually get in this and you and you do this assessment it's going to give you a long list of things that you may or may not be interested in. Um, I always say look for anything that's an 80% match or more so you can see I've circled over here on the right hand side it says 100% match for education and training 100% or excuse me 82 87% match for human services. I have taken this assessment probably 20 times if not more and I always get the same answer. So I say it is extremely accurate. I've had other people in Career Connections take it and they go through and they tell me, yes, this is what they have done or are interested in doing. So I, it is a very accurate um, assessment. So again, like I said, we try to tell you anything that's an 80% match or more. But if you know that you're, you're really interested in, let's say I was really interested in finance, that's sitting at a 75% match, so it's not too far off. We could we could look at things in finance. So Josie, if you'll hit the next button. Um, I just did this one based off of education and training. So again, inside of this is going to give you different careers or different fields to look at. So again, we're saying anything that's an 80% match or more. And you can see on mine, and I put a little check there, you could see that that is, that is correct. Um, anything that's an 80% match or more is what we're looking at. So if you'll hit next again, I chose teacher assistant to look into. And from here, and again, guys, these are just screenshots. So when you're actually doing the assessment and you're in the program, you can actually view more and read more available about the field. But this one here, it's going to tell you uh, teacher assistants. And right below that, it's going to give you a description of what that job would be. You can also see below that is going to give you median salary and then it's also going to tell you things about education level. So how many people in that field have a certificate? How many people have some college? How many people have a high school diploma or less? Um, right below that, again, we were talking about salary. This is um, pinned in on the Unifor area. So you can see annual job openings around this area. You're looking at about 108 job openings. Your median salary, so once you've been in the field for a little while, you're looking at about $24,000 a year. If you'll hit the next button, Josie. Um, it's also going to give you daily tasks. So if you're interested in, well, what am I going to do as a teacher assistant? You can click on the about, and it's going to give you daily tasks of things that you would do you know, at that particular job. Um, it's also going to give you, and I just took another screenshot of this, a more national education attainment level. So for the countrywide, what type of education is needed to do this type of job. If you want to hit the next button, Josie. Um, and then again, it's going to give you more salary range. And this is based off of the Unifor area. So it's going to give you like a starting pay, a median wage, and then like on the high end of the scale so you can kind of see what your progression in that field might look like as, as you know in forms of salary if you want to hit next Josie um, the other tool or another tool that we use when you come to career connections is called careeronestop.org this is a great website this website actually has career videos that you can view um, and Josie, I don't know if you want to click on that link. It's a, uh, it'll actually take you to careeronestop.org. And what this will do, you can look at all the different fields. So let's say that you wanted to see or learn about some other jobs in education and training. If you want to click on that green, yep. Mm -hmm. So you can see it's going to give you a list of jobs there that you can, you can view. Let's say that you are interested in learning more about child care workers. Then you can click on that and what it's going to do and you can watch the video if you want to you, we're, we won't do it for for this short amount of time but if this is something you're interested in you can watch the video you can see it's kind of like a day in the life of what does a child care worker do generally the videos are two minutes or less if you don't want to watch the video you can read the video transcription there but the other thing i want to point out is over here where it says bright outlook so that means that there are going to be jobs in those in that particular field once you graduate, right? So this looking five to ten years out. Um, that's good when it says bright.
Um, I have seen them where it says poor outlook and instead of a bright sun you have rain clouds. So um, keep a look on that. Now this is based off of nationwide but you can narrow it down to where you want to live. So if you want to look here in Lenore, if you want to look in say Charlotte, you can do that and you can see you know the average pay for that area you can also see if it's going to be a bright outlook or not in that area because while it might be a bright outlook nationwide for the particular area that you want to live in it might not be a bright outlook so that's something that we want to think about uh, Josie if you want to go back to the slides and that should be it I think the next slide has our contact information so you are welcome to contact us at Career Connections um, that's got our telephone number and our email address on it uh, we are there Mondays and Tuesdays 8 till 7 and then Wednesday through Friday 8 to 5 if you want to give us a call or stop by we'll be happy to set you up and do these assessments Thank you so much, Sarah. Um, that was just awesome and very helpful. I hope that our students can really take advantage of the tool that you just showed us. Um, for me, I know firsthand that working in the social field is where I need to be. I just love helping people. Um, and that's why we're doing this today. So our next presenter is the Dean himself of uh, career and technical education at CCC and TI. Um, uh, Keegan, if you don't mind, just taking it away. Sure, and for, real quick, Josie, how much time do we have left? I don't want to interfere with things too much. Do we have? Or just we have time? plenty of time. Okay, we have plenty of time. Okay, great. If you want to, just go ahead and open up my presentation. And um, first, you know, thank you for having me today. And I appreciate Josie putting this all together. Um, and like she said, I'm, I'm the Dean of Career and Technical Education. So a lot of the career talks are around um, the area that I'm in. Um, but, you know, as we talk about these areas, I want to make uh, clear, you know, that w when I was a student and someone would have come to talk to me about this, you'll hear all these areas that people are in. And I probably wouldn't have cared in all honesty. And so don't get caught up too much about, you know, so-and-so is here or there. Uh, if you reach out to any of us, you know, we'll, we'll be happy to help you out answer any questions that we've got. You know, and um, you know, I think a little bit about what Sarah said there, and and you know, trying to figure out what you want to be when you grow up. And you know, I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up, so don't feel bad about that. You know, because uh, a lot of times I think we're we're asked to make these decisions, and so um, you know, maybe uh, we'll go down and see Sarah together, because Sarah, I may be coming to figure out what I need to be when I grow up. And um, so you know, just keep that in the back of your mind. But we're here to help, and we're here to answer questions, and so reach out to any of us. And so I'm just going to give you sort of a quick view of, of the CTE world, but keep in mind that, um, you know, philosophy is changing. So again, you may not care about history and stuff like that, but just real quick, you know, when I was in school and I was looking at the different areas, sometimes I didn't really understand them. And so typically, historically, you know, CTE is more about what we would call the workforce or going to work. So if you say like, you know, I want to go to college, I want to come up here to CCC and TI, and I want to, I want to, I want to spend two or three years and then I want to go to, to work and to the job place. You know, typically you can come into CTE and um, and there's also some other areas besides the, the area I'm in that you could you could do, you know, something of that nature uh, versus you may hear some of your friends say, I'm going to go up there and take a transfer program, which is which is a little bit different than, than what I do or or um, or what the part I'm in. And so but it's not to say we don't work hand in hand because we very much do. And so. You know, there, there are areas in CTE that you could transfer in as well. So, um, but first and foremost, we're probably focused on folks saying, I want to come up there, you know, get some education and then go to work, which I get. And so if you'll advance the slide there for me, uh, Josie. And so there's a lot of area, like there's a lot of programs, right? And it's hard to keep them all straight. You know, if I'm reading through the website, there's some of them, I'm like, I don't even know what that means, right? So I tried to break them down real quick and say, there's kind of three areas that at least make sense to me. And you'll see I've broken into trades and, and sort of business areas and then technology. And so if you'll go ahead and advance that slide one more time, Josie, when we're looking at trades, you can see some of the things that you see here, right? And so you see, you know, welding and collision, auto collision repair and cosmetology and auto systems tech and industrial system, which breaks down into drafting and mechatronics and robotics and things of that nature and, and culinary arts. And it gets kind of overwhelming, but 
really when you look in this area and say, well, what's the deal with this group? This group really does focus more on what we call the labor market or like going to work. Like, you know, you come up here, spend some time, and then you, you go into, to, you go to work. And some of these have a really good outcome. Some days I'm, I'm, I'm interested in quitting this job and going up there and signing up for something like industrial systems because they have some really nice salaries that go along with their welding. I mean, you know, and so, um, and there's things here that maybe I don't, <laughs> there we go. And so there's some things that, uh, that are, that are here that um, I'm not even listing. We have things like the Lyman's program that's not necessarily part of my area, but I'll get you in contact with somebody. So you may hear us about something. Feel free to reach out to me or Josie, whoever, uh, Mitzi, whoever. And so, um, but these, these are typically the areas where, you know, you go to work. And if you'll hit the slide one more time, Josie, then you can see here's some of the, some of those jobs that you may, you may hear about. And so that's the area of trades that typically um, leads you to some of these these jobs um, in our area. And if you hit it one more time, then we'll go into the next one, which is the business programs. And so here you see some, you know, business administration, accounting and finance, and hospitality and management. So this group's a little bit different. And if you'll, and, and again, if you want to hit the slide one more time, because more importantly, they, like you'll notice, here's the jobs that these kind of um, you end up with, or you, that you end up with. And so bookkeeping, which in auditing, which would be more around accounting and finance. But you see a lot of management, right? So office manager, first line manager, restaurant manager, hotel manager. So if you're interested in some type of management, then, you know, typically the business area is a, is a good area. It's very kind of vague, but it's very flexible. And so, you know, you may say, well, I think I want to do something. I may want to work in a hospital. I may want to work, you know, in insurance. It doesn't matter. You know, these are these, these general degrees will give you the skill set where you can apply it to different industries. And that's what makes it nice. And so, um, you know, that's the sort of the business area. Uh, of, of CTE and then if you want to hit the slide one more time and so here we have the technical programs and so in technology you see again um, sort of some different areas of information technology which is around you know computers and programming and and hardware and software and things of that nature you have office systems technology which is real close to some of the business programs where you're learning more specifically about um, how to do administrative tasks and assist in those tasks inside an office setting. Medical office is, is very similar, but it's specific to the medical world. A lot of times we say that in medical office, you know, you want to touch paper and the medical assisting, which would be more under the healthcare area, you want to touch people, you know. And so, you know, for me, like I knew very early, like I don't like blood and I don't want to touch people. So I, like the medical world is not my cup of tea because I faint at the drop of a hat with blood. So, you know, we have areas where you can work in the medical field, but not necessarily have to deal with that aspect of it. And then we're kicking off this biopharmaceutical technician or uh, technology program, which is new and up and coming uh, to work in some of our local um, industries of biopharmaceutical. And then the WT is electronic engineering. So it's kind of like IT, but it's more the electrical side. So if you like playing with circuitry and I was always scared of that. I'm an IT person, like my undergrads in IT, but I was always scared of WT because I thought I'm going to lose my hair if I get shocked. Right. So that was what scared me. But some people really love you know, the thrill of soldering and putting circuitry together and stuff. And, and that's really cool. And I've, I've learned to like it as I've, as I've grown older. And then the biomedical um, equipment technology is kind of in there too, which is where you deal more with um, the biomedical, like in this case, medical equipment and setting it up and things of that nature. So if you'll hit the slide one more time, Josie, then you'll see those are some of those careers that you see associated with that. And so that kind of gives you an idea of a little bit about like CTE and um, and I often say like it's a it's an area of pulpery because we do a lot of different things and so um, I don't know all the answers to to some of these some of these um, these uh, industries and so that's why you know if you ever ask me a question and, and I don't know a whole lot about it I'll, I'll, you know I'll get you in contact with somebody who does and uh, because we have some really really good people that you're going to see coming up in these series of talks that can answer some some questions and really help you understand their world and they're excited so don't let the enthusiasm like scare you you know because they get so, super excited which i'm glad they do they're very enthusiastic and they're very passionate about their area and so if you hit that slide one more oh there it is and so the one thing you know as far as just an overview and a take away you know again we we do focus on the labor market or going to work and but we also have um you know programs that transfer and i'm sort of being redundant here and repeating a little bit and that's okay you know because again things are changing so things are not so much set like in this area or that area so you know if somebody said what's like what is the the one thing about cte that is the biggest strength and i would say you know, for a lot of our programs, you can come in and you can get a degree that can put you to work or it can help you transfer to a university or college 
or it can help you go to work and have them pay for you to go back to school, which is even sweeter. And so, you know, that's, it has a little bit of a safety net is what I call it. So that's kind of the strength now, but if you're a student like this is, I'm going to transfer with, you know, without a shadow of doubt, I'm going to go to App State, then, you know, I would probably advise you to go talk to the transfer program. I mean, and I think any of us want you to get where you want to go. And so, you know, none of us are going to sell you a pig and a poke and say, you know, I didn't know I'm just going to try to keep you, you know, or something like that. We want to, we want to help you get where you want to go in the fastest amount of time with the least amount of, of resources spent. So please, 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 you know, uh, ask questions and don't feel bad about asking questions. You know, another piece of advice I can give you uh, if I were sitting in your shoes, if I could go back and tell myself something, advocate for yourself, like, you know, definitely advocate for yourself. Don't expect anybody to do it for you. You know, and you, you may be a squeaky wheel and that's okay. Just don't be a pain in the hot end, but you know, definitely ask the questions. And if you don't like an answer, ask someone else. There's nothing wrong with that, you know? Um, so please, please, please do that. And I can't stress enough that if you think that oh, I can't afford college, that is the last barrier you need to worry about. You know, do not worry about the finances. We will find a way to get it paid and get you through school and get you going on in a good life. And so we're here to help you, you know, achieve this, you know, self-actualization of being what you want to be when you grow up. And so don't think you can't afford it. You can definitely afford it. If you can't, if you don't think you can afford it, you come see me and I'll find a way. Uh, we'll find a pathway to get you get your education paid for. So that should be the last barrier that you're worried about. So anyway, I'll get off my soapbox and turn it back over to Josie. But I just wanted to to jump up and down a little bit and just encourage you to come talk to us and and ask questions and be curious because that'll pay off in the end. So thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Keegan. Really, I want to piggyback on, you know, the last barrier that students should have is finances. We will find a way to get you through your program. So the safety net that Keegan was talking about, well, there's a big safety net to consider with fast-tracked, low-cost programs. Those are going to be going into deeper detail as the Cobra Career Talks events um, progress throughout the semester. We're going to be talking about emergency management, healthcare administration, um, healthcare jobs, biopharma, biopharma, uh, biomedical. I mean, these programs are in your reach. They're in your backyard. They're low cost. It's local. Who knows where you can take your credentials? Take it to Asia, go to Australia, learn, be a part of the world, be a part of our community, come back, teach us, educate us on what you learn so we can share that with others. So um, I really do want to thank everybody so much for their time and patience. And I hope that y'all come back uh, February 17th. We're going to be talking about emergency management, EMS firefighter training, um, criminal justice, and a few others. So keep an eye out. You'll hear from me. Uh, thank you, everybody. And please don't forget, actually, I'm going to need your help here. I'm going to need you all to fill this form out for me. And let me know what school you're coming from. Let me know if this presentation was helpful for you, what we can do next time to work on things. Um, please do that Google form. It will be greatly appreciated. And now I want to open the floor up for any questions. Is there any questions out there for Keegan, Sarah, or Jimmy? Fire away. Does anybody know what they want to do when they grow up? Just curious. No. <laughs> Welcome to the club. I'm still, like you said, Keegan, I'm still figuring it out. Yeah. There's lots of stuff going. For me, my interest in CTE, if I ever had the chance to do it, would be go into massage therapy. And I would want to work um, part time for pregnant women mm -hmm. and infants. That would be my focus area. Mm hmm. Yep. I took the quiz that Sarah mentioned, and I'm like, education's not even on there, so I need to come see Sarah. <laughs> yes, I'm here. I did that. A lot of overlaps, which is good. 
Does anyone have mm -hmm. any questions for us? Now is the time. So Josie, just something real quick. So whenever we have uh, some of those applications and such, we'll share it with uh, you so that you can you know, uh, give it to the, the correct students. So just want to let you know, because in the presentation, I didn't leave any links because we don't have that yet, but we will give it to you soon. That's great. We are the liaison. So I'm sure we'll be meeting about that too. Well, I mean, I am just elated that we have had this opportunity to talk to one another and just to get the good news out there that there are low cost programs for our students. There's ways that they can dig themselves out of some hard situations. So um, everybody keep that in mind, keep in touch, ask your transition advisors questions, keep in touch with the directors of these programs and our number one job is to support you to get you where you want to go. So that's my slogan and I'm sticking to it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. I'm going to hang in there just in case anybody wants to ask questions. I'll be like a Marine, the first one in and the last one out. Do you want the recording still going or do you want to stop that? I I think we could edit it down. We'll edit it down. Good good call. We're gonna